nearly beating the unbeaten Steelers while well shorthanded. Their next test comes Tuesday, hosting the Cowboys. Here's Coach John Harbaugh talking about the character of his team as it handles so much adversity. I think we're very resilient, very persistent, mentally tough team, and, and uh, only getting tougher because of the things that we're facing. So uh, it remains to be seen whether we'll get the job done or not. It's really not what you, what you um, talk about. It's what you do, you know, so we've got to go do it, and we've got to start with the Cowboys. Okay, so so many questions, and Diana, the first and most important one is for you. What is the latest on the status of Lamar Jackson? Again, they play Tuesday. But what's interesting is John Harbaugh is usually very transparent with us about who's going to be playing and who isn't. And he will not give an answer as to whether or not Lamar Jackson will start on Tuesday. But here's what's really interesting here, Greeny. So when a player tests positive for COVID-19, like Lamar Jackson did on Thanksgiving, they have to quarantine for 10 days. That's the protocol that the NFL has followed this whole season. After those 10 days, there's a three-day ramp-up period that they have to go through testing with the trainers to make sure that they're healthy. Tuesday only gets Lamar Jackson to day 12. So mm. this could be really dicey with what they decide to do here, which is probably why John Harbaugh is not saying anything, because right now they may not actually know. So this is going to be a situation where we're going to have to wait and see. Okay, so that's fascinating. So then, Bart, let me come to you as my resident mm -hmm. former Raven. We watched them. I, th I thought that was one of the most impressive performances of the NFL season on Wednesday. Uh, a gutsy to make that as tough as it was against the Steelers. So as you look at them right now, where are they? What are the Ravens at this point this season? I think that Harbaugh has these guys right where he, he, where he wants them. He has their attention. He, he has them believing. And he's building the backups or getting tremendous experience as Brandon Williams is out, as you think about no Calais Campbell, no J.K. Dobbins. And they're saying, hey, if we, we go out here, you guys represent the history of what that what's on that decal. That decal out there means that no matter what, we expect you guys to go out there and play like a Raven. And you talk about last year, they really came in as the favorite. And I think they were underwhelmed because they were feeling themselves a little bit. They're one of the most criticized um, teams right now in the NFL. Lamar Jackson, nobody believes or knows if he's a franchise quarterback. You have a lot of guys that are going to go into the postseason with chips on their shoulders, and they're going to have it, and they're going to be able to make the playoffs when you think about their record that they have going. They should be at least 10-6 and six at minimum. 11-5 and five should get them in there. And they're going to be a team that nobody wants to face. Yeah, the remaining schedule is favorable. So, R.C., let me go to you on that thought. Did, maybe this is a better role for them going in, not, not as the one seed and everyone talking about it, but maybe going in a little under the radar. It doesn't seem like a team that, that someone is going to be dying to see come into their building. You're shaking your head. Greeny, Greeny, cause that, cause, because that's things losers say. You know, I don't want to go in as the hot team. I, I don't want to go in as the favorite. I want to go in as the team that's been losing because if we're losing, then there's no pressure. No, th that's what you say to make yourself feel better. That's what you say to make yourself feel like, you know what, this is a better position for us or we've come through this adversity and now we can win games. It's about how the Baltimore Ravens play. Do you think that teams are going to fear the, fear the Baltimore Ravens more as the underdog than they did last year? when they had the reigning MVP, when they were blowing people out late in that season? No, it's about playing the games. And for the Baltimore Ravens, it truly looks like it comes down to can you stop the Cleveland Browns from running the football and can you win that game? Because every other game, to me, I believe they'll be favorite and I believe that they'll win no matter who is playing quarterback with the way that that defense played against the Pittsburgh Steelers. But who are the Baltimore Ravens going forward with scare teams? Not the fact that they're the underdog. You know, Diana, there are very few things that I look forward to more when we can finally do it than having Bart and RC in the room together. That, that is something I think I speak for everyone <laughs> when I say, when we can get, just looking at Bart's face right now. When I can have the two of you guys sitting in here in this room, that is really going to be magic. Anyway, we'll do more on this as we go, but I want to do some either-ors here. Let's look around the league at some of the other matchups that are coming up this weekend and some of the quarterback matchups. And Bart, I will start with you. Phillip Rivers head-to-head -head with Deshaun Watson, who has the bigger day. Not even close. Deshaun Watson's playing better than any quarterback not named Patrick Mahomes in this league. You talked about 24 um, touchdowns, only five interceptions. The problem is the rest of the team didn't come to the party, but it's not because of he's not playing well. And he's finally getting to the groove where he sees the field so so good right now. He's making you know winning plays like we've always seen him done. Do is just as defensive and worth anything. Trey yeah, JJ Watt. Having an MVP season. RC, Baker Mayfield and Ryan Tannehill head-to-head. -head. Who do you like? 
Um, let me think. Uh, Ryan Tannehill, the guy that we were talking about in the MVP conversation early on this year, the guy that's actually turned the Tennessee Titans around. And we know that they're led by Derrick Henry, but look at the games this season or the games last season where Ryan Tannehill has had to make plays for the Tennessee Titans to overcome. I expect him to be able to do that this week as well. Minkovich, we got Taysom Hill head to head with Matt Ryan. Who do you like? I'm going Taysom Hill on this. There's a reason why they paid him $21 million. They didn't want to let him go. They feel that he could potentially be the guy after Drew Brees. He's able to help this team stay afloat while he's injured, while Drew Brees is sitting down. I'm going Taysom Hill. He is a modern quarterback, running, throwing, out of the pocket, in the pocket, whatever you want to call it. He is the man. So $21 million, Taysom Hill, he's my guy. Oh, I'm looking forward to talking about this because as we look at the NFC playoff picture, you see where everybody sits. The Saints are on top. You got the Seahawks and the Packers right there nipping at their heels. Think about the quarterbacks that we have, the pedigree of the quarterbacks that we have at the top of that list. But is Taysom Hill enough to carry the Saints where they want to go? Yeah. Diana, I think we have to start there. What is the latest on Drew Brees, who's been out since week 10? What do we know about the timetable for him to come back? Okay, so they're shooting for week 15 against the Kansas City Chiefs as a return date for Drew Brees. Obviously, they're keeping a close eye. We're talking about major injuries. We got ribs, we got a punctured lung, we got shoulder. Three major things that he's got to deal with, and we know that he wants to get out there. You know, Greeny, I watched him against the Falcons, or at least the Saints against the Falcons just two weeks ago, and Drew was part of the warm-up with Taysom Hill. He was mentally going through all the different reps. We know he wants to get back out there, but this is really going to come down to his recovery and if he is healed and healthy enough to get back out there. All right, so RC, we just heard Rob Nikovich very high on Taysom Hill. I'm going to ask you a direct question. If Drew Brees is not able to come back this year, do you see any way the Saints go to the Super Bowl with Taysom Hill as no, their quarterback? No, 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 <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> And, not? and and obviously Rob only watched Rob only watched the first week against the Falcons. I talked to some people in the Falcons organization before that game and just asked, okay, what are you guys thinking? What are you looking at? And many people said, you know, something maybe like Colin Kaepernick used to have, or something maybe similar to what Lamar does. No one expected to see what they saw out of Taysom Hill against the Atlanta Falcons week one. They were heavy man coverage. And so Taysom Hill always knew where the matchup was. Fast forward to the next week when now somebody has some film on him. He's 9 for 16, only 78 yards, an interception against the Denver Broncos. And when I watched the Denver Broncos game, it was two reasons it was unwatchable about halfway through. One, because you knew that there was a, 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 a practice squad wide receiver playing quarterback for the Denver Broncos. <laughs> but also you knew that there was a utility guy playing quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. And so we will see what happens this week against the Atlanta Falcons with more film. But I believe even with this defense playing better than any other defense in the NFL is at this moment if they don't have a healthy Drew Brees they can't win it all. Why do you believe in him so much Rob Nikovich? Well RC let come on now this was an either or it was an either or on that one it was either Taysom Hill or Matt Ryan and I went with Taysom Hill so let's not say that I think that let's well, not. Well you should have said you went to Taysom Hill because of New Orleans defense. <laughs> so what do you think Rob? So what, let's what do not you say think they can be with I Taysom think, Hill? <laughs> I think that they can be very good right now in, in helping that team stay afloat until Drew Brees gets back. I believe that for them to win a playoff game, to get deep, to, to win a Super Bowl, you need Drew Brees, a guy that has played in those big games, somebody that understands to check the offense in the perfect play against what the defense shows them. So for me, I like Taysom Hill. I feel like he has a bright future in the NFL. That's why they paid him $21 million. They didn't want to see him go to another team and, and develop into a big-time quarterback. So either or Taysom Hill or Matt Ryan, I go Taysom Hill. Either or Drew Brees, Taysom Hill for the, for the Super Bowl run. For a Super Bowl run, I go with Drew Brees. Come on, RC. Don't put me on that. Like, right, like, oh, like, all right, all right. Oh, Let me get you? Diana back in here quickly. And, and, no and one is closer to that here, team than you are. Here's the thing. To, to add to what Rob is saying, uh, Sean Payton said this to me uh, when they faced the Falcons. He said, because I asked him directly, what's the difference between Taysom Hill and Drew Brees? Which we, we know the, the list could be very long. It could be chapters. But he said the biggest thing to me is Drew Brees is like Emerald the chef, right? He's got his hands in everything. He's on the stove. He's messing with the meats. He's, he's doing everything all the time. That's how he runs the team. He's constantly communicating and telling everybody where they should be, what they should be doing. 
Taysom Hill's not like that. He can't be that yet. He's new to being a starting quarterback. So in terms of winning the Super Bowl, you're going to need Emerald there at that quarterback position, helping that entire team get in line and, and, and basically get on the same page. That would be way too tall of a task for Taysom Hill at this point. I like All right, Again, we hope to have him back week 15. As we continue on Get Up on a busy football Friday. 